combustion analysis. Okay, what is combustion analysis used for? It's for analyzing samples. What you do is you burn them up, and then after you burn them up, you figure out what the components are, okay? Because it gives you grams of at least two of the components. This is used for compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen, combustion analysis. Um, I wanted to set one up here, but we're not allowed. How come? Because it might explode, and that's bad. But anyway, I don't think it would explode. Essentially, how this works is that you have a chamber. Um, we call it a furnace, okay? And it's got lots of heat. It's got an igniter in there. That's where the, what causes the heat. Because we've got oxygen that goes in, and your sample is the fuel. Your sample is the fuel. So why do you suppose we have pure oxygen in there? Well, pure oxygen is going to mean whatever the fuel is, it's going to burn completely. Poof. Completely burn up. Now, when you have complete combustion, what are the products? When the fuel is something like a hydrocarbon, meaning it has hydrogen and carbon. Yeah, so you're going to make CO2 and water. Okay, if your car burned perfectly, if it burned up everything and there were no byproducts, there were no uh, partially burned products, what would you have? You would just have CO2 and water. That's what would come out the tailpipe. Okay, this, because it's pure oxygen, it's not air, okay, what you're going to get is pure CO2 and water. And the way this works is this. You have these glass tubes. And these glass tubes each contain an absorbent. The one in here for H2O absorber, it is hygroscopic. It will pick up every bit of water. So what's happening, you burn your fuel. It's swept through here. All the water is picked up. So you weigh this before you burn your fuel and then you weigh it after it has picked up the water, it's going to weigh more. Does that make sense? Okay, what about over there? It says CO2 absorber. What that is, is a compound especially designed to bind to carbon dioxide. And so what's going to happen is it's going to weigh more after you burn your sample than before. So what you're going to get from this is you're going to get the weight of H2O and the weight of CO2. And if you got the weight of those two things, what will that give you? What can that give you? It can give you moles. It can give you moles. And what we were looking at a little while ago when we were talking about the hydrazine, the N2H4, if you've got one mole of N2H4, how many moles of hydrogen do you have? You got four. So now, looking at these, CO2, if you've got one mole of CO2, how many moles of carbon do you have? One. If you've got one mole of H2O, how many moles of hydrogen do you have? Two. Okay. So the way this works, is you can use those relationships, like in the problem we just worked, to go through and get moles of hydrogen and moles of carbon in your sample. And if you've got those moles, what can you do if you have moles of the different atoms in your sample? You can do a mole ratio, like what you guys did in your lab. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, you want to get a mole ratio to get the formula, okay? You know, we can, I'm going to go through this example. Before we do that, that's a good question. It, you get, might not be clear on that. Um, what you guys did in your lab, that you're going to turn the report in tomorrow, is you took a mole ratio, right? Took the mole ratio to get a whole number so that you would know what the formula was, okay? Um, let's do a couple of those just to see, all right? And then we'll come back to this.
this is so important, I want to make sure that you guys get it. Okay, I don't want to gloss over it. We're going to do 3.17, obtain an empirical formula from experimental data. And I'm going to blow this up, and I mean that in a good way. Okay? Empirical formula means experimental formula. What you guys are finding with the lab that you just did, that you finished up by weighing your copper, is the empirical formula. Empirical is experimental. Empirical formula also means the simplest formula. Simplest formula, okay? So this says a compound containing nitrogen and oxygen is decomposed in the laboratory and produces 24.5 grams of nitrogen and 70.0 grams of oxygen. What is the empirical formula? Okay, so what do we do? We've got 24.5 grams of nitrogen and we've got 70.0 grams of oxygen. What we do is figure out moles. And that's like what you did in the lab. So one mole of nitrogen is 14.01 grams. One mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. And so this is going to give us 1.75 moles, bless you, nitrogen. And this is going to give us 4.38 moles of oxygen. Okay, so now, how can we figure out the formula? Well, what we do, here's nitrogen and here's oxygen. 1.75, 4.38. Okay, here's the hard part. Are you ready for the hard part? Which of these numbers is smaller? This one. You divide by it. And so what does that give us? Well, this divided by that is 1. This divided by that is about 2.5. 2.5. Now, if this was your data, I would say round that sucker up to 3. <laughs> okay? Because why? Do I think you guys don't do a good job? No, that's not it. It's that you've got too many indeterminate errors. What kind of indeterminate errors? Well, in that lab there, like that copper you just weighed, the copper's not dry. It's been sitting out, but it's got moisture from the air. So that number is not exact. Um, what you did with your fractional crystallization, that was all over the place because none of that stuff was dry properly. Not your fault. You didn't have an oven, didn't have the stuff. The assumption here is that compound was analyzed in a real lab and they did things correctly. So when it's 2.5, it's 2.5. So you can't have a 2.5, you have to have whole numbers. What do we have to multiply this by for whole numbers? Two. And this is gonna give us N2, O5, And that's going to be the answer. So do we have to write out the name of that also? Or? It's multiple choice, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, I enjoy having you in this class. I, I need, I need, what do they call it? A, a foil. I need a foil. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, for practice, 3.17. Let's see if you've learned this. If you've learned it good, as they say in the vernacular. Okay. A sample of a compound is decomposed in a laboratory and produces, write this down, 165 grams of carbon, 27.8 grams of hydrogen, and 220.2 grams of oxygen. 
calculate the empirical formula. So, go ahead and calculate the empirical formula. What you do is you find moles first, and then you find your mole ratios. The carbon, 12.01 grams. The hydrogen, 1.01. The oxygen, 16. All those per mole. Do it just like we did, do it just like we did this one. So far, is this what you guys got? except for the people who are asleep, which I don't like. Uh, okay, we do carbon, we do hydrogen, and we do oxygen. So the carbon is 13.7, the hydrogen is 27.5, and the oxygen is 13.76. I'm going to divide everything by 13.7. So this is going to be C1, H2, O1. So what's the formula? That would be the empirical formula. Is it fine if I put 2.74 for moles with carbon? Or is that? If you put what? Three, sorry, 2.74. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's it's multiple special. choice, so you're going to pick the answer out of them. Okay, now, empirical formula sometimes is not the same thing as molecular formula. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. What do I mean by that? Well, this is simplest formula. For example, I'll draw you C6H6. This is benzene. What's the empirical formula of benzene? That's the empirical formula, CH. Okay? This is the formula, that's the empirical formula. So sometimes they're not the same thing. What do you do if they're not the same thing? How can, how can you figure out what the molecular formula is, the true formula? Well, you need one more piece of information. You need to know what the molar mass of the compound is. And so generally, you'd use another technique to get the molar mass. You can put it in a mass spec. Run it in a mass spec, and it will give you the molar mass. All right? So we're going to look at an example of that. And then we'll go back to our combustion, because I really, I really do want to burn something in there. So. Oh, wow, shoot. I better show you because otherwise you'll be. 
Okay, here's the deal. How come there are two and it says the same thing? How come there are two and it says the same thing? It's because sometimes when you get stuff analyzed, they give you percents. What do you do with a percent? How do you do one like that? Because here's the deal. There's going to be two tests. And half of you will have it like this, and half of you will have it like that. How do you do something like that? I'll give you a hint. It's a percent. So what does that mean? You always assume with a percent what? You're exactly right. 100 grams. So what you do is you say 60.00 grams, 4.48 grams, 35.52 grams. And you do exactly what you did here, exactly what you did. Where you go through and you get the moles, and then and then you do what we did over here with the formula. You write it down, and then you divide by the smallest one. And in this case, this was 2.25, which you know, if you guys got a 2.25, I'd say round down, but this is a good laboratory. So you want to make that, you want to make this a uh, whole number. So if it's a 0 0.25, what do you multiply it by? Four. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you do there. Okay. So I just want to tell you about that. Now, now on to this other one. A lot of jumping around. That's what happens when I don't have my coffee. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to focus again. Now stare at this really hard. Are you ready? Okay, do you feel better? Yeah. Well, that looks worse. Okay, here we go. Butadione, a main component responsible for the smell and taste of butter and cheese, contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. The empirical formula is C2H3O, and the molar mass is 86.09 grams per mole. What is its molecular formula? So we got C2H3O, and the molar mass equals 86.09 grams per mole. Okay. So what the heck do we do with that? Well, I'm going to show you. First, you get the empirical molar mass. Empirical molar mass, yeah. And you do that by saying carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, 12.01, 1.01, 1.01. Times, 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 two, three, one. Last off, I'm sorry. So it's 43.05. Okay, what's the actual molar mass? 86.09. What do we do? Oh, what? What you do is you put the molar mass over the empirical molar mass. So 86.09 over 43.05. That equals what? Two. So what you do is you say two times C2H3O. And what does that equal? C4H6O2. And there you go. Well, there's just so much lovely stuff in this chapter. It's just, what's the word I'm looking for? Okay. All right, now back to this. All right, 
So we burned our sample, and now we know how much water, how much CO2. I'm going to turn the page. Are you ready? Oh, it's not that bad. Upon combustion, a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen produces 1.83 grams of CO2, 0.901 grams of H2O. Find the empirical formula. So it only contains carbon and hydrogen. So it's going to be C something, H something. Okay? All right. So now we've got... 180, I mean 1.83 grams of CO2, and we've got 0.901 grams of H2O. A mole of CO2 weighs how much? Oxygen 16. 2 times 16 is 32 plus 12 is 44. Okay, one mole of water. Two hydrogens is 2 plus 16. What's 2 plus 16? Okay, I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to cheat. Look down here, this is 0.0416, and this is 0 0.0500. So this looks kind of familiar, kind of familiar. Here's the extra step. Are you ready? extra step. This is where it's different from what we were doing before. I've got 0416 moles of CO2 times one mole of carbon and one mole of CO2 and moles CO2 cancel and now get your calculator out. There you go. Nothing up my sleeve. Okay, I got 0 0.0500 moles of H2O times 2 moles of H and 1 mole of H2O. Again, get your calculator out. Actually, it should just be three significant digits. So now what do I do? Well, carbon point zero four one six, hydrogen point one zero zero, and I divide by the smaller one. That divided by that is 1. That divided by that is 2.4. OK. What times this gives you a whole number? So 5 times C1 H2.4 is going to equal C5 H12. And that's how that works. Okay, now, they have a four practice here. Here's the four practice. You guys, between now and the test, please do this one, okay? Not right this minute, but please do this one between now and the test, okay? Now, there's a second one. There's 21. What's the difference in this and 21? 
21 is not that much different, except it's just tedious because they throw extra step. What's the extra step? They say the sample has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, how do you get the oxygen? Because you're adding oxygen to burn it. How do you suppose you get the oxygen? Let's look at the problem. They tell you how many grams the sample is. So after you do like what we just did, you, I mean, you wouldn't go all the way to the bottom. You'd find moles of carbon, moles of, of hydrogen. You get grams of carbon, grams of hydrogen, and you subtract it from this, and then what's left is the oxygen. Okay? That's just way too tedious. So you will not have one like this. Okay? Um, you could, I mean, this has like all the last three in one, but there's a problem with having one problem that shows everything. If it's one problem, if you miss that one problem here, up the creek without a river. Wait, no, that's not right. Okay, something like that. Strike that and put in something that makes sense. Okay, so where are we now? Oh my God, writing balancing chemical equations. Oh Lord, okay, I guess so. We can do it. Do you feel up to it? No. Okay, good. We'll do it. All right. Okay, chemical reactions. This is very important. Some people don't get this yet. So, I'm telling you, reactants are on the left, products are on the right. Reactants on the left, products on the right. If it is balanced, you have to have the same number of atoms of each thing on either side. Okay? Same number. How do you do that? Well, you can't break up a formula because H2 is a thing. So you can't just say, well, I just need, you know, I need just one H, so I'll just make it an A. You can't do that. You can't change these. All you can do is put a number in front and it's called a coefficient, okay? So you change the coefficients until it's balanced. So you cannot change the formula of any reactant or product. You can't break up a formula. All you can do is to add a coefficient. So now, um, there are steps here, and these are taken out of the book. I think the best way to do this is to try one just for... Um, this for the halibut? That, this fish. C3HA plus O2. And this is a combustion, so you get CO2 plus water. So C3AA, what is that? Propane. Right. <laughs> okay, it's propane. So what are we doing? We're adding oxygen, so it's an oxidation. What kind? Well, this is a combustion, because here we've got fuel. We're burning it with oxygen. We're making CO2 and water. That's what we're doing, okay? All right. Now, whenever doing these, first thing you want to look at is, are any of the atoms more than one place on either side of the equation? Are they in more than one place? And if you look, oxygen is in two different places on this side. That means you want to save that for last. So what do you do first? Pretty much what you feel like. Okay, most of the time you want to leave hydrogen and oxygen to last. Okay, so what does that leave? It leaves carbon. So how many carbons are on the left? Three. And there's one here. So in order to make it three, I'll put a little three in front of it. So far, so good? Shoot, we're almost finished. Okay, what do we do now? Well, we've got hydrogens, right? Because we want to save oxygen for last. We got eight hydrogens here. How many over here? Two. What do we do? Put a four. Yeah. And then you say, great, googly moogly, we're almost done. We got to balance the oxygen. So we have three CO2, so it's three O2s. How many oxygens is that? Six. Six plus 
four. Six plus four is ten. So we have ten oxygens. So ten oxygens. How many do we have here? So what do we do? And guess what? We're finished. We did it. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Okay. Elmer Fudd. I got that CD. Elmer Fudd sings the classics. Okay. All right. Try this one. What the heck? We'll try it. We're game. We got nothing better to do, right? Okay, this is not propane, this is propene. It is, it's propene. And we'll, yeah. And we'll look at how that's named sometimes.